Welcome to season four of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big health topics into small bites. I'm your host, naturopathic doctor, Amy Newsel, and this season, we'll dive into something we are all familiar with, fatigue. What is it? Why does it happen? Most importantly, how can we fix it outside of this? Coffee. Also, you can enjoy the video version of this podcast on YouTube. The channel is at To Health With That. Can't wait to see you there. This week, let's finish up our talk about why detox can feel bad by talking about some common gene SNPs that can actually impair those phase two conjugation reactions. Remember, if your phase two conjugation reactions are in trouble, then you can get stuck after those phase one uber toxins come out a lot more easily and it's more likely to make you feel bad unless you're planning for it in advance. If you're not sure about any of these genes, highly recommend running your genes through either Ancestry or 23andMe and then using separate processors to see if you can find these genes. Obviously for the methylation genes, I really like the um, methylation panel at geneticgenie.org, but they also do a great panel that will show you your various CYP genes called the detox panel. And that one shows you those phase one cytochrome P450 genes. Unfortunately, it does not show you the phase two genes, so you have to kind of hunt and search for those. So here we go. When you're going into a detox, it does matter to know if you have any genetically impaired phase two functions, right? So here's a quick list of the major gene SNPs that can interfere with particular phase two reactions. Bear in mind, I'm talking about the biggies, but there are other smaller players as well. So methylation, MTHFR, MTR, MTRR, and to a lesser degree, any gene ending in MT, which is a methyl transferase like COMT or HNMT. And those detoxify, like COMT does estrogens and neurotransmitters, HNMT does histamines. So to port, support these, you're eliminating the folic acid out of your diet, you're adding food sources of natural folate, and potentially adding an MTHFR safe folate like 5-L-MTHF, or folinic acid, and a methyl donor like maybe SAMe, TMG, or one of the others. Glutathione conjugation. GST and GPX are the big major players here, and then to a lesser degree, CBS, and also the genes from the methionine and folate cycle like MTHFR, MTR, and MTRR. But really, truly, GST and GPX, they are huge in terms of your body's manufacture of glutathione, and so to support this, you need either precursors to glutathione, like NAC and selenium, or glutathione itself, like maybe a liposomal glutathione. It just depends on what you actually tolerate in terms of taking. And it also, this will help your body to catch more of those free radicals. But if you do have those gene SNPs, you're going to want to have a higher level of glutathione intake than even somebody doing a normal detox would. I kind of always recommend glutathione. Sulfation. So that's conjugation to a sulfur group. The SULT family of genes, including SULT1A1, is especially important here. To support this pathway, eat your food sources of sulfur and also retinoic acid rich foods like eggs, liver, that sort of things. Those really like sulfur concentrated foods. Or take a sulfur based detox enhancer like MSM. It's a great sulfur donor. Also, if you have a known salt gene issue, consider keeping a small amount of caffeine in your detox as a salt inducer because caffeine actually makes those salt genes work just a little bit better. Glucuronidation, the UGT family of genes is really important here, including UGT1A1, which conjugates acetaminophen, which is, by the way, that's Tylenol, it's called in uh, North America, or paracetamol in most other countries. If you have a problem with detoxifying that, you're very at risk. Tylenol, acetaminophen, paracetamol is actually the number one fatal overdose that is seen in emergency rooms because it is so dang toxic. 
And it's also over the counter and people think of it as a non-issue, right? It's just Tylenol. It's just paracetamol. It's a big drug. It's a bigger drug than we think. So if you have this 1A1, you have to be especially careful about Tylenol dosing and not taking it long term. And then UGT2B17 actually is the conjugator for testosterone. So that also needs to be detoxed. You can support function of these glucuronidation pathways with dietary sources of D glucaric acid. That's hard to say for whatever reason. D glucaric acid, including legumes and cruciferous veggies. Cruciferous, again, that's your like broccoli, cabbage, kale, cauliflower family. And also inducers of glucuronidation, including, including resveratrol. Also, some of the chemicals from cruci cruciferous veggies, like the sulforaphanes and things like that, and curcumin from turmeric. Hey, it's me, Dr. Amy, and I want to show you a quick walkthrough of what is in Genetic Rockstars, because I really want to see you there. So here's Genetic Rockstars. This is what you see when you log into the platform. But what else you can see, if you go over here to the MTHFR library, over here in the left side menu, you can see some of the resources. So there's a quick start guide. There's a basics course, symptom tracker, basic state worksheet, some stuff about COVID-19 and MTHFR because we have a particular thing, recordings of Q&A sessions, and they're searchable. So if you need to find something, you can. Stuff about pesticides, clean lifestyle, food fortification, vaccines, things about MTHFR and how it inter interacts with different medications, right? Like drug gene interactions, MTHFR and chemotherapy, MTHFR and Accutane, MTHFR and anesthetic, things about pregnancy, making babies. But then there's also an MTHFR 101 course that you have access to. And so I'll just choose a week here. We'll look at week one. And so what you can see in this course, which is included in your membership, right, for 10 bucks a month, super simple. You've got a course lesson, which is in the form of a video, and then handouts, right? Fortified foods, medicine cabinet clean out, symptom tracker, week one challenge, yet another video, and then a PDF of the files so that you can save it, you can download it, you can come back to it. And there's 10 weeks of that just included in your membership. So I would love to see you here. Not only is it an amazing cute community, but it's an amazing resource community.tohealthwiththat.com. Acetylation. So the NAT1 and NAT2 gene SNPs are the most well known for actually affecting this process. To support this function, stop smoking. I mean, if you haven't done that already, now's the time. Today's the day. Consider some extra vitamin C and add some antioxidants from your diet to help induce those NAT genes. Dietary antioxidants are like the brightly colored fruits and veggies, all of the good things, right? Glycination is actually the biggest and most common form of amino acid conjugation. Of amino acid conjugation, I couldn't find any specific gene SNPs that affect this process, but because you're conjugating to amino acids, which are protein components, you do need to keep a reasonable level of lean, healthy proteins in your detox diet. A complete plan is definitely recommended for a healthy detox, and the best policy is to work with a knowledgeable practitioner. In the next episode, we will discover some strategies that can help you feel better during a detox.